This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In this video, we're gonna talk about settings for nighttime photography, specifically what settings do I use to get my types of photos. I'll be sharing all the details with you. Everyone shoots in different ways. So in this video, I will cover aperture priority, shutter priority, and full manual. Throughout this video, I will be using and referencing Fujifilm APS-C cameras because that's just simply what I use. However, this video is aimed at every single type of camera. Also, these settings work for me, my gear, and my shooting style. For you, you might need to slightly adjust them because where you shoot, what gear you use, and your technique might be slightly different. For example, if you're using a medium format camera at f1.4 in a very bright part of town like Soho, the settings will typically be a little bit different compared to if you're using an APS-C camera in a part of town that might not get as much light at f5.6. However, what I'm gonna share will be a great starting point for most people, and from then on, you can dial it as you wish. Aperture priority is probably the most popular mode that most people use, and for good reason, it gives you a lot of creative control with the depth of field while letting the camera handle shutter speed and ISO. And at night time, you can still use aperture priority. However, you need to do some initial settings and adjustments to make sure that your camera is using the correct or the most optimized parameters. So the first thing we need to do is set up auto ISO. Auto ISO is effectively where you say to the camera, this is the lowest ISO I wanna use and this is the highest ISO value I want the camera to use. And then you can select anything between that range. Secondly, you want to make sure that your minimum shutter speed is set up correctly because if it's set to auto or something extremely low, then what you'll end up with is the camera selecting an inappropriate shutter speed because it doesn't know what you're trying to do and you end up with a blurry photo. So let's start with the ISO. Typically, I will have this between 500 and 6400 for most nighttime scenarios and I have never ran into issues with this particular setup. However, if you're shooting on a slower lens, for example, that's at f4, or perhaps you're shooting in a part of town where there isn't as much uh, ambient, not ambient light, light from the windows and stuff, right? I forgot the technical name. Uh, then you might want to set a bit higher to around 1000 minimum and 12,800 maximum. However, 500, 6400 is a good starting point. As for your shutter speed, this really depends on the camera and the lens. If you have IBIS or optical stabilization and you're shooting at 28 mil, for example, of course, your shutter speed can be lower compared to not having IBIS and shooting at 100 mil. Typically, I will set this to a minimum shutter speed of one over 100 as a safe number for most scenarios. Of course, you can go much lower to one over 30 if you're shooting wide with IBIS, or you might need to increase it if you're shooting telephoto without. But start at one over 100 and then you can dial it in as you see fit when you start shooting. The next setting we need to do is global exposure adjustment. And this is gonna be a little bit counterintuitive to many beginners, and you actually want to underexpose the photo. The reason you wanna do that is because if you look at the back of your camera with the exposure set to zero, and then you look at the scene in front of you, in most cases, the camera will be showing a brighter scene compared to what your eyes can see. Cameras tend to slightly overexpose at night, so by reducing that exposure, you will get a more realistic picture as well as protecting the highlights. How much to underexpose? It depends entirely on the scene. Personally, I found between minus 0.6 and minus 1.6 to be the sweet spot, minus 0.6 being, let's say, just after blue hour, and minus 1.6 being when it's pitch black outside. And finally, we have the aperture value. Personally, I set it to wide open because the more open the aperture is, the higher the shutter speed would be, and the lower the ISO would be in terms of what the camera selects. However, that's a creative choice. You might be in a situation where you don't need as much background blur, or perhaps you want to stop it down for whatever reason, then of course do that. However, my view on that is you want to let in as much light as possible. And unless there is something that's restricting you from shooting wide open, then leave the lens at wide open. Thank you. 
when the shutter speeds are already low and they're very sensitive, let's just say, then perhaps you want to retain control of the shutter speed because maybe the aperture value is not as important to you. That's where shutter priority comes in at night and it's very useful. So a lot of the stuff we've talked about will carry over. Your ISO values are between 500 and 6400, they will carry over. The global exposure of between zero, minus 0 0.6 and minus 1.6, depending on the scene of course that will carry over and then you will leave your lens in fully automatic and then just set the shutter speed as before i would start at 1 over 100 and have a look to see what your camera is doing because if you have let's say an f2 lens and at uh, 1 over 100 the lens is at f5 right you know that you have more headroom in terms of the amount of light that's coming in to increase the shutter speed and reduce the risk of motion blur. So perhaps you can increase the shutter speed to one over 200, and then the lens will open up to f2, for example. So you now know that one over 200 is your limit with the current lighting conditions, because the lens can't open any more than that. So when it gets a little bit darker, then you might need to reduce that shutter speed. It's a bit of a dance between the settings your camera selects and the aperture value you select. So based on what your camera is trying to do, you can then adjust and play with that shutter speed. And again, it's entirely up to you what shutter speed you use. Of course, if you want to freeze the motion, you can increase that shutter speed, but obviously the price you pay is the ISO will now have to increase. You'll have a slightly noisier image, not really a big issue. However, if you want to introduce motion blur and creative motion blur into the photo, which is very, uh, popular especially at night then you can reduce that shutter speed and the camera will compensate by reducing the ISO you get a cleaner image but also closing off the aperture therefore you'll have less background blur given that so many settings are already preset and given that the ambient lighting is not going to shift around too much at night certainly not as much as compared to during the day you could argue that shooting in manual might make more sense and i agree with you i think that shooting in manual at night has many advantages and i personally do that as well not all the time but certainly at least half of the time now, how you would approach it is, of course, a little bit different to previous because now it's your job to make sure the camera stays underexposed. However, once you've preset these settings, I think it's going to be pretty straightforward as long as the lighting doesn't change too drastically. The first step is to set the ISO and this is going to be at 1000. 1000 is going to give you a clean enough image. However, it's also going to give you plenty of headroom for shutter speed and aperture settings later on. In my experience shooting at night, I have very rarely gone under ISO 1000. In most cases, let's say shooting around Soho, which is a brightly lit area in London, my ISO was sitting between 1000 and 3200. Sometimes it might slightly drop to let's say 750, other times it might go up to 6400. But shooting on a lens like this, which is a the 18mm f1.4, at f1.4, typically you are kind of sitting around 2000 ISO-ish. So let's start at 1000. Next, you wanna do your shutter speed. It's important. So for this one, it depends on the lens you're using. If you're using a wider lens, like again, this 18 mil, so 28 mil in full frame terms, set it to one over 100. If you're gonna use a longer lens, let's say a 135 mil or an 80 mil, whatever, of course you wanna increase that shutter speed Let's just say one over 200, one over 250. Again, it depends how much coffee you've had. It depends if you had IBIS, you get the idea. And then you wanna open up the aperture all the way and look at your global exposure, see where you are. If you're overexposed, you're letting in too much light. So you can do one of two things. You can increase the shutter speed, you can reduce the ISO, or you can close the aperture down. Personally, I would increase the shutter speed because Unless I want to add motion blur, the higher the shutter speed, the more headroom I have for reducing motion blur. If the image is heavily underexposed, then the first stop for me would be to increase the ISO and I'd go from 1000 to let's say 2000. And then I would have a look and see where I am. Now, again, I want to be at around, let's say minus one exposure. So as long as I am somewhere in that region, I'm happy. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not science. Roughly minus one ish is perfect. Now this is where the gear doesn't matter brigade kind of falls apart because 
let's say your lens is an f4, so you're already wide open. Your ISO is already on the max, so you're getting a noisy image, but it's fine. However, your shutter speed is at 1 over 50, and there is no way you can increase it without extremely underexposing your photo. Well, I'm sorry, that's where gear does matter, because having an f1.4 fast prime will literally solve all your issues. So if you find yourself shooting at night more, it definitely warrants a faster prime of between f1.2 and f2. So this is something you have to keep in mind. You can only push the settings so far until you hit a gear related limit. Now, once you get to around about f2 primes, generally that's enough to shoot at night. However, as I've said before, if you find that at least 50% of your photography is at night, then yeah, f1.4, f1.2 lenses will give you so much more headroom, which will allow you to keep that shutter speed higher, reduce motion blur, or even stop the lens down if you need to, to get a slightly different depth of field. All right, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you a foundation for how to set up your camera for nighttime photography. And from then on, you can build on top of that, depending on your own photography style and your own needs and the gear that you have. Uh, if you have any questions, please write them down below in the comment section. If you have any of your own tips or suggestions about nighttime settings, please write them down below as well so others can learn from you. Apologies for the exposure. This video is probably picture black now, but it is what it is. Clouds, I can't control them, unfortunately. That's it. Thank you so much again. I uh, hope you're having a good day. I hope you're having a good week. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I want to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've been using their services for over five years and I couldn't be happier with what they have to offer. I use Squarespace to publish my travel and photography blog where I write about gear, travel, photography and more. I use them for my online store where I sell my presets, travel and camera guides. Squarespace is my photography portfolio where I showcase my best images from all of the travels and locations. All of this is under one roof with a great web interface and mobile apps to keep on top of everything regardless of where I am. If you're looking for the best all-in-one solution, then I can honestly recommend Squarespace. Please click on the link in the description and use the code RomanFox for 10% off. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring and thank you for watching.